I wanted to put together this quick video in response to James' question about kind of how to pull and filter and, and how does that apply to each loop happen because this is quite common um, whenever you're trying to integrate the systems. So I just teed up part of a flow here and I just always kind of manually trigger this uh, depending on what I'm trying to do and then I already went ahead and I did this uh, fine so I've got my you know list customers and there's a couple different things that I can do here so let me just um, let me just run this to begin with, right? Oh, that's not, um, it's fine. We can use this in a minute. And so obviously what we get here, right, is a, uh, oops, a list of the customers that are in here. And real quickly, I can look at here. What I did there is I was saying display name. So essentially you can kind of, you know, push your display name in there. Um, so we'll use this as our filter. Let me come back into here. I'll edit this and then what I'll do here is I'll say um, display name um, equals put the double quotes. Then I'll come in here and I said display name and we'll see if this worked. I don't think it's double quotes actually. That's what's not going to work. Oops, we'll make a quick change here. Perfect. So let's see what it came up with. Nothing, right? So in this scenario, that's actually kind of what I wanted because uh, all that that means is that uh, I am not in the system there. So what uh, I can cheat and let's get a display name, right, that says Trey Research and we'll run this flow again. So if I hit this and tell it to start over manually, let me put this display name in here. We'll see that we'll get a different result and we'll actually get one, right? Just kind of showing you that our filtering is in fact working um, ahead of time. Now in here we should get, uh, let's see here, control F. Yep. So we just have this one customer here, display uh, research. Okay, so now we have that part lined up. Now what you were, this is what you're talking about, right? Is that now you thought it had to have like a, a next array or what did you need to do to be able to use um, the records in afterwards. So let's say you're, you're wanting to get this ID here, right? Basically, let's say now you want to do You've got the customers, now you want to get uh, get row ID, right? Oops. Okay, so let's take this by here. And then we'll say get record, right? And this means that we're going to use the record ID to do so. I'll line up my sandbox. Uh, yeah, I think I had Cronus. Yep, very well. I'll grab my V2 APIs. And now we'll type customer. Um, and I just want to say for anyone that's using this, if you're wondering maybe why my experience looks a little bit different, um, go to your settings and you'll see view all power automate settings and make sure that you have English and whatever whatever your language and, and country settings are and then hit this yes button and hit save and then you'll have a nicer experience. Um, so then when I come for me here, I'll hit this ID 
And what you see is this automatically puts this in a loop, right? So now what you want it to do, you can probably do the meat of the work of what you're doing in here. Um, but another trip, now let's say if you needed to take this outside of here, what you could also do is you could say initialize a variable. Oops. Let's just call this customer ID. Um, we'll make this a string. And then in here, I can set a variable. Right, so I'll grab the customer ID and then in here I'll do this. And then outside of this step here, I can come in here and I've got my customer ID, right? So let's say you, you did a whatever reason, right? I know there's a bunch of different situations where I need to come outside of the apply to each loop. Um, and so then I'll, I'll do it in here. And then you can also throw this in like a scoop. I'm sorry, scoop, a scope. Um, but yeah, so hopefully this provides a little insight.